Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome students to the online lecture of Digital Logic Design. In the today's lecture, we will be discussing the ROM. In the previous lecture, we discussed the RAM, and in the current lecture, we will be discussing the read-only memory ROM. Uh, the read-only memory is essentially a memory device uh, in which permanent uh, binary, uh, binary storage is stored. Uh, it means that uh, you cannot change the contents uh, of the RAM uh, and there is a no uh, write operation for uh, this uh, ROM. Uh, when the memory has this property, then we call it as the read-only uh, memory uh, because it, it doesn't possess any uh, input uh, to write in here. And for the same reason, we can see that uh, there are no input data lines available here. Uh, the only data lines that are available here are for the outputs. Uh, say we have a 2K into N uh, memory, uh, where basically 2K is representing, 2 to the power K is representing the number of uh, uh, addresses or the number of uh, locations, uh, memory locations, uh, while N is the word size or the width of each uh, location. Uh, for the 2K one, we uh, have to uh, select N uh, different address lines and according to these address lines uh, 2k different location will uh, would be accessed and each of location would be having n uh, bit data uh, generally to uh, represent uh, a rom we need a decoder uh, the decoder's main function is to uh, access uh, different uh, locations according to the address lines that are uh, given. Uh, so it uh, uh, offers the functionality of an uh, address decoding here. Uh, say we have a memory which is uh, 32 into 8 uh, means the 32 locations and 8th is the width size or the word size here. Uh, so if we can access uh, the location uh, 32 we need to have 5 uh, bit address line. So the 5 bit address line here is represented from I0 uh, to I4. Uh, for each of the address uh, line, uh, for each of the combination of uh, these uh, 5 bits, uh, we would be selecting uh, one uh, row and each row is then connected uh, to the uh, output in a form of uh, this thing. This is A0 to A7 is actually representing the contents at any given uh, location. Uh, here the representation uh, is based on the symbolic representation of the array symbols that we discussed in the start of the last lecture. Uh, so these are representing the array symbol here because uh, this is the OR gate and all these intersection points are representing you can say a kind of an input to this OR gate. Uh, to uh, program any uh, ROM, uh, what we uh, need to do is we need to mention what are the intersection uh, points bet between the each of the connections here. And from the last slide, if you see that, uh, because there are 32 uh, lines here or 32 addresses locations here, and there are eight output connections here. So there are total of 256 internal connections that are present here. So we have to represent that how we would be dealing with these uh, 256 uh, connections here. To represent uh, this 256 connection, what we need to do is we generally represent uh, the functionality of ROM in a form of a truth table. So here we are representing the uh, truth table for a uh, general ROM. Uh, we have considered here the example, the same example that we have uh, discussed uh, in the uh, last uh, slide, that 32 into 8 uh, ROM. Uh, for the 32 into 8 ROM, we have seen that we require 5 uh, bit ad, uh, address lines. So these are actually the 5 bit address line. So this, uh, this will be having the 32 combination here. For the uh, sake of simplicity, we have only required uh, right here the first 4 and the last 4 combination here. Other follow the same patterns. These are just the uh, binary forms. Uh, this is the 0, 1, 2, 3 and similarly these are the last one 32, 31, 30 and the 29. Uh, for any a given uh, location, uh, we have 8 bits of storage element. Uh, so we have written the 8 bits in a form of this. Say this is, these are the representing a certain uh, data that is, that is stored on each of the memory location. Uh, we have represented all these uh, for the first row. We, are represent, uh, we have represented the data as in form of 1011110. While for the second location, uh, we have represented the data in a form of 00011110. Zero 01. So in this way, we have just stored the data at 32 uh, different locations. Uh, 
uh, now what we will do is that uh, according to the previous uh, diagram that we have just seen that we now need to mention that uh, which connections of the ram are connected to the output and which are not connected to the output uh, generally when we are going to program the rom for the first time and which is generally the only time uh, when we set the uh, the rom to a certain functionality uh, then what we do is that uh, we mark the uh, intersection using the two different things uh, first this is a kind of a fuse uh, if the fuse is uh, open then that, uh, that means that there is no connection there or no intersection there it would be representing a logic level zero uh, while if they are connected then the fuse would be closed at that time and it would be representing the logic level uh, one so to represent a logic level uh, one what we are doing here is that we are representing in a form of a crosshair uh, so on whatever in intersection we are representing this cross it is actually representing the uh, logic level which is equal to one and the absence of uh, this cross is representing logic level as uh, zero here so uh, for the decoding uh, part if we say that we have a address at location three address 3 is equal to these contents. The contents at the address 3 are equal to represent, are represented as 101100010. Uh, so to represent them in a form of a permanent link or a permanent fuse link, what we do is that uh, we we'll, uh, mark the permanent fuse or the close connection through this X. So whenever the one is present, we would mark it as one here. So this cross is representing the one here. The absence of this cross would be representing zero. Similarly, the next two would be marked as this x so these are representing the connections and the absence of connection would be marked as zero here similarly this is marked at x here and this is representing the one and the absence of it is representing as zero so if we access the address line three then we will be getting these words at the output because a zero would be then equal to zero a one would be equal to one a two would be equal to zero similarly a three would be equal to zero a4 would be equal to 1, A5 would be equal to 1, A6 would be equal to 0 and A7 would be equal to 0. Similarly, in the same way what we do is uh, we connect all the other uh, patterns according to the table that we had, uh, the truth table that we have defined in the last uh, slide and we mark the cross wherever the 1 is present. So, it, this 1 is actually representing uh, the link or the intersection point that is connected while the absence is representing the uh, missing connection here. So in this way, what would happen is that if we say, uh, put the value of address line 3, uh, which would be uh, represented as uh, this would be equal to uh, lo uh, logic level 1, this would be 1, this would be equal to 0, this would be equal to 0, and this would be equal to 0. So in this way, we would be selecting this here. And when this would get selected here, uh, what would happen is that because of this OR gate, uh, the rest of the values will be equal to uh, zero all the because only this row is selected at the or this address location is selected at that time uh, so this all the ones or the values that are present here will be equivalent to the output value from a0 to a7 so we will get this data at the output uh, so in this way uh, we represent a ROM functionality uh, that uh, once uh, we have decided what is the truth table of the uh, ROM, uh, we then permanently uh, make uh, the fuse connections according to it. And once these connections are made, uh, you have to just give the uh, appropriate address here in these uh, five bits and you will get the result or the contents of the memory at the output. Uh, this operation uh, of the uh, ROM it could be uh, interpreted in two different ways. The first is the memory one which we have just uh, discussed that uh, the any given location is uh, representing a different stored words or stored information. Uh, second is that uh, it could also be seen in terms of uh, implementation of a, some boolean function. Uh, for example, if you just uh, consider the uh, last output of the system say a7 if you just consider the last output here a7 in the a7 if we consider it as a function of these five inputs consider this a7 as a function of these uh, five inputs uh, then wherever the one is present is actually representing the main terms because this is uh, along with this or gate is actually the main term generator so if you can just consider it as a main term uh, then 0 2 3 and then 29 these would be actually representing the a7 in a form of a combinational function and similarly we can also express all the others in form of the combinational circuit 
So if we just represent a7 in a form of a Boolean function, which is actually the uh, Boolean function of five different inputs from uh, i0 to i4, uh, then it is, is represented in a form of sum of min terms like uh, this. The, all the places where we have a one here, we can combine those min terms and it would be representing the functionality of our function in a form of a7. So in this way, we could use all the other outputs and each output could be representing a separate uh, Boolean function. Uh, if we design a ROM, uh, then generally we not uh, need to represent the fuses connection or represent them in a form of diagram every time we, uh, we are representing our ROM. Our truth table is generally enough to represent the functionality of our ROM and this is generally the followed strategy or the standard uh, which is followed in most of the IC designs too. Uh, suppose uh, we will be considering here an example. The example is that we have uh, given a 3-bit number and we have to determine the square of uh, this number and we would have to represent this number in a form or this functionality in a form of a, a ROM. So what we do is that uh, we first write the three bit numbers here. So these are the, actually the inputs of the system. And uh, for the three bit number, we know that the maximum number is uh, seven and the uh, square of the seven is 49. So uh, 49 could be represented in the form of six bit. So the maximum of six bits are required to represent the output of the system. Uh, the first one is the zero zero and its square is zero. The next is one, one square is one. The square of 2 is 4. So we have just written that decimal uh, part here just for the convenience or the uh, reference. So actually these are 3 bits are the input and their scale is represented in a form of a 6 bit uh, this number. So now we have to represent uh, this in a form of a ROM. So if we uh, see this table in detail, uh, probably we could minimize this circuit in a, a better form. Uh, for example, uh, if you see this table, Look at just B0. B0 is equivalent to the A0. It means we have to just connect A0 with the or to the output B0. So B0 and A0 are the same. And also if you look at B1, its value is 0 for all the combinations. So we can also fix it to 0. So we can just reduce this table to now to 3 inputs to 4 outputs because D2s are non already non. Uh, so we can reduce our circuit now from three input to a, a four output system. Now, if we have uh, reduced it, our the remaining table is in form of this. We have deleted now the B B naught and the B one columns here, and the rest is represented here as this one. Uh, the B naught is connected to now A naught, and while the B one is permanently connected to a uh, zero. And for the remaining, what we have to do is uh, for all the uh, two to Two to the power three uh, locations that are the eight location for the each of the eight location uh, we have to write this binary data on them and by just representing this one this data on the outputs uh, we could actually be representing uh, the boolean uh, function of uh, the power two function anything that is given in the input is uh, scaled and the result is produced in the form of the output so uh, we have not mentioned the uh, interconnections here but they are in the similar manner uh, that they are connected in the last example that uh, we have seen uh, because in the general uh, ROM structure this truth table is generally considered enough and this is actually representing that where the intersection is occurring or this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. All the ones are actually representing the interconnections point that are fused together or they are the, considered the closed one uh, while the absence uh, of the connection is representing the uh, zero. So in this way, if we connect the system, then we can use this A to 4 uh, ROM connection uh, to represent the diagram or the functionality of uh, this system. And you can see that the uh, 8 into 4 here is 2 power 3 is representing the 8 different location and 8 different locations are represented here in a form of 8 combinations of the input, uh, while 4 is the width uh, of the output vector here. These are 4 are the width of the output vector because the 2 are already known. So we have just skipped them and added them separately. Uh, the required paths in a ROM could be programmed in four uh, different ways. Uh, the first one is the mass programming. Uh, in the mass programming, uh, what we do is that uh, you write a truth table for the uh, ROM that you wishes to achieve. 
and then you submit this uh, truth table to the manufacturer and then uh, manufacturers uh, model this or uh, program this into a memory unit of the uh, ROM uh, by connecting all the fuses that should be remain intact for uh, providing a logic level of 1 and the absence of them would be representing the logic level of uh, 0 according to the uh, truth table. Uh, this uh, procedure is generally not uh, very uh, good because uh, in this case you have to uh, give a special fee to the uh, uh, manufacturer and generally the manufacturer may not be willing uh, to represent or uh, uh, design a single IC for you because uh, they are more interested in the uh, large scale manufacturing. Uh, then there is a second uh, kind of uh, way to pro uh, program the ROM2 uh, that is called the programmable uh, ROM. Uh, in the programmable ROM uh, what happens is that uh, a P-ROM units contain uh, you can say a fuses different fuses uh, which are intact and uh, giving uh, the, uh, or programming the, uh, these fuses actually uh, gives us the truth table that we require to implement. Uh, in the uh, P-ROM, the fuses in the uh, P-ROM are generally blown by the application of a high voltage uh, pulse to the device uh, through a special pin and uh, from that uh, what we can do is uh, the, uh, the fuses that we want, remain, uh, we want to have remain intact uh, will be there uh, while the rest of them would be deleted and this is only a one time uh, process and we can only write the truth table of the at the ROM at only one, uh, one time. We cannot change it after that. Uh, so for the first two case, uh, whatever we have written the, uh, in the ROM uh, is not changeable. Uh, then there is an other type of uh, P-ROM uh, which is known as the erasable uh, P-ROM or we also called it the e uh, pre rom uh, In the e pre rom we have an extra functionality that if we put that IC in form of in, in under a certain ultraviolet light uh, for a certain time period then uh, it uh, what it do is that it erase all the contents of the uh, rom so when the, all the contents of the rom are erased then we are able to reprogram it again so in this way what uh, uh, we have an extra functionality there is that if we are using a certain rom and once we want to uh, erase it or write some other data in it, we will apply an ultraviolet light on it. And this would make us all the connections move back to its original state. And then we can reprogram it again. And then there is an uh, extra functionality in addition to this edit uh, that is known as the electric electrically erasable uh, P-ROM uh, or we call it the double E-P-ROM. In the double EP ROM, we have an IC in which there is a certain pin uh, that is available to us to, uh, you can say, uh, to apply the uh, erasable function. So, if we want to erase the PROM, what we do is that we simply uh, apply an electrical signal instead of the ultraviolet array, uh, ultraviolet light, and it will just erase the contents of the ROM, and then we can uh, reprogram the uh, ROM according to the our own new truth table. So these are the generally four kinds of the uh, ROMs that are commonly used. Uh, kindly do read uh, these pages for a better understanding. Thank you.